Hi guys! It's been almost a year since I built my Ergorox split keyboard. Ergorox works great for me, but I don't really use as many keys as Ergorox offers. What I really need is a keyboard with the only three rows and just a few thumb keys, and it looks like corn keyboard is exactly what I need. I already ordered PCBs, cases and switches for this project. These corn PCBs support KL hot swappable sockets, and I'll be using new Zilios 67g V2 switches. This should be a great project, let's build it! We'll start from soldering diodes. I usually do this in 5 steps. First, apply a bit of solder on one of the pads. Then a bit of flux on top. Solder one side of a diode. That's the right time to adjust it, if needed. Finally, solder the opposite side. In the end, let's clean up the joints using the isopropyl alcohol. Now it's time to solder the kale sockets. Let's just put all of them in place first, the same side where diodes are, and then we'll solder them all together. I will be socketing the LED-C board for this build, and that's the right time to solder the Milmax sockets in place. I'll add all information about the sockets in the video description. We want to keep LED C board as close as possible to the main board. To achieve this, we'll be using Milmax pins. I'll add more information about these pins in the video description. Let's just put every single pin in the corresponding socket. Turn around the board and slightly push on top to make sure every single pin in the right position. Now it's time to solder the LED C board to the pins. The USB Type-C connector is a bit taller than the sockets. That's why we can't put the board right onto the sockets without any gap. By the way, you won't face this issue if you're using the regular ProMicro with the micro USB. To align the board for the proper soldering, find something as big as USB Type-C connector and put that on the opposite side between the boards. Solder 4 corner pins and check if everything looks good. If so, go ahead and solder the other pins.
it's the right time for TRS connectors. Just put them in place and solder all four pins one by one. I will be socketing all at this place too. There are multiple different options, but I chose the same sockets as I used for Elite C socketing. Just cut two four position parts from the original 64 position row and solder it the same way as we've done for the Elite C board. That's where the fun part begins. Before touching any of LEDs, make sure you lower the temperature for the soldering iron as well as for 25 gates. Otherwise, there is a chance to burn LED as they are way too heat sensitive. The soldering technique is similar to diodes. First, put a bit of solder on one pad. Then apply flux. Now solder an LED and make sure you position it right. Please refer the original build guide, but in general make sure you solder the largest LED part to the pad with a mark on the board. Let's solder one LED pad at a time. That would allow us to avoid overheating LEDs. Now it's time to add 21 LEDs facing the opposite direction. Put a couple of LEDs in the corresponding placeholders and make sure that the largest LED part facing the market pad on the PCB board. The idea is to create a kind of solder bridge between LED pad and PCB pad. It takes a bit of time, but remember that you want to avoid overheating LEDs. So try for a second, if it doesn't work, go to the next one, and so on.
these two displays require some work to be compatible with the previous Vestadroid Milmax sockets. I've got this with the pins pre-soldered, but they are not compatible. So what we have to do is to desolder them and solder new Milmax connectors. I'll add more information about this 64 position connector in the video description. At this point we need to cut two 4 position connectors from it. To take the connector out, we have to apply as much solder as needed to keep all pins connected. That's how you can transfer heat from one place to all four pins in the same time. When connector is out, we have to clean up all solder from the holes in the PCB. If you have a proper tooling for this, go ahead and use that, but if you don't, you can use a regular mechanical pencil lead for this. Just keep pulling and rotating the lead and you can make holes in the PCB. The last soldering part is to connect four pair of pads to provide connectivity between LED-C and OLED display. Make sure to do this on the right side of the board, that's the top one. That's a great moment. We can assemble all parts together and wire up two halves using TRS cable. When you plug your keyboard to the computer, you should see all the displays lights up and all LEDs are on. In case if something went wrong and you don't see LEDs and all the displays lights up, you have to investigate all LEDs one by one. There's a chance that you put some LED in the wrong direction and there is a shortcut in the board. I used 1.5mm acrylic to laser cut place for this board. With the 1.5mm acrylic, switches should just click and stay in place.
8mm M2 standoffs work just great for this board.